Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Suspense. The adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Dragnet. And now, Gangbusters. Welcome to the Film Detective Podcast, where we bring you theater of the mind programming from the golden age of radio. I'm your host, Carl Amari. This time, it's a 1944 radio detective adventure of Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Film Detective, your one-stop shop for classic film and television. Looking forward to classic names like Judy Garland, Audrey Hepburn, Humphrey Bogart, or Marlon Brando? We've got you covered. But don't worry, we don't skimp on the rare cult classics. Comedy, mystery, film noir, western, thriller, or drama, we're on the case. Who are you? The Film Detective Vintage Films, Reborn. On radio, Boston Blackie was an ex-safe cracker constantly suspected of crimes he did not commit and forced to play the role of amateur detective to clear his name. Blackie's gal pal, Mary Wesley, assisted him from time to time. Chester Morris was playing Boston Blackie in a successful series of Columbia movies. So, in 1944, NBC signed Morris to reprise his role on radio. The program was a tremendous success and quickly went into production for syndication without Chester Morris. He didn't have the time to devote to a regular radio series. Beginning in 1945, Broadway actor Richard Kalmar played the title role, with Jan Minor and Leslie Woods playing the part of Mary Wesley over the run. Maurice Tarplin portrayed Inspector Faraday, who was always trying to pin the crime on Blackie. The radio series lasted until 1950, when it moved to television starring Kent Taylor. This radio episode, The Jonathan Diamond, is the very first radio episode of Boston Blackie, and it stars Chester Morris. He's arrested in Chicago for a crime he didn't commit. It's back to June 23, 1944. Here's Boston Blackie. Rinso. R-I-N-S-O, Soapy Rich Rinso presents Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris. Municipal Tower to Transcontinental Flight 17. Municipal Tower to Transcontinental Flight 17. Over. That's us, Tom. Take it. Check. Transcontinental Flight 17 to Municipal Tower. Flight 17 to Municipal Power. Over. Police instructions. Check and see if you have male passenger occupying seat 24. Passenger occupying seat 24. Wanted by police. Over. I'm just checking my list, Joe. Yep, we got a man in 24. I'll tell him. Municipal Tower. We have a man in seat 24. The name he's traveling under is John J. Jones. John J. Jones. Maybe that's his right name, but the police want him. They know him as Boston Blackie. Maybe you've met Boston Blackie before on your local movie screen. In case some of you haven't, I think you'll soon be fast friends of his. And maybe you've already tried new Soapy Rich Rinso, too. In which case, you don't need me to tell you how good it is. But if you aren't using Rinso now, I can't think of a better time for you to start. Now when summer is here, you certainly don't want to spend hours on wash day scrubbing and boiling clothes. Well, just keep in mind that Rinso gets out the dirt without hard scrubbing or boiling. A short soaking in Rinso's lively suds, a few quick finger rubs, and you'll be ready to hang out a Rinso whitewash. Try this on your clothesline and see if you don't start whistling while you wash. And now, meet Boston Blackie. Outside the law is no strange territory to Blackie, but never does he stray for personal reward, although the police, and notably Inspector Faraday, find no solace in his motives and only bewilderment in his ability to remain out of their reach. Meet Chester Morris as Boston Blackie, enemy to those who make him an enemy, Friend to those who have no friend. You 
Chicago police have been very cooperative. Thanks a million. Glad to help you, Inspector Faraday. When we send a man to New York, you can return the favor. Glad to. Anytime, Captain. There's the plane now, Inspector. See it? Blackie has got to be on it. We know he was on the plane when it left Detroit, and it hasn't made any stops. Well, Blackie's liable to get out of anything, any time. I remember once I had him in two sets of handcuffs. In the next minute... No handcuffs. No, Blackie. Chances are I couldn't have made the charge stick anyhow. Never have been able to tie anything on him in six years. You'll be able to arrest him now, won't you, Inspector? You're sure Blackie's the man, are you, Miss Moray? Oh, of course I'm sure. I was with my grandfather when he was robbed and the money stolen. The thief wore no mask, and I recognized him from the picture of Boston Blackie that was in the paper last year. Mm. Oh, I'm sure it was Blackie. Mm -hmm. Why do you keep asking me if I'm sure? I just wanted to be certain, that's all. I've been waiting to get a witness to make a positive identification for a long time. Oh, here comes the plane now. Do you think he'll have the money with him? I can't wait until I get my hands on it. There's lots of money in this world, Miss Moray. What I can't wait to get my hands on is Boston Blackie. Go ahead in, Miss Moray. I've been keeping Blackie in my hotel room here until our plane leaves for New York. Talk to him yourself. Mm -hmm. I can't get anything out of him. Go ahead now. Monahan's in there guarding him, and I'll be right here outside the door. All right, Inspector Faraday. Blackie always was a soft touch for a girl. Here's hoping you get something out of him. Oh, Inspector, you'll never know how important it is to me that I do. Uh, hello? Uh, he won't say a word, miss. Just sits there like he did all the time the inspector was questioning him. Oh, I'll try. Blackie? Boston Blackie, would you talk to me? About business or pleasure? Maybe a little of both. Detective Monaghan, could Mr. Blackie and I go over in the corner and talk? Oh, sure, I don't know why not. I'll stroll over to the window. Would you please come over here with me, Blackie? Why, sure. I've been waiting for a chance like this to have a little chat with you, Miss Moray. You identified me as the man who stole $10,000 from your grandfather. Yes, yes, I did. You know, you never saw me before in your life, Miss Moray. I wish I had. Then I wouldn't be in such desperate trouble now. You're in trouble. You had me arrested because you're in trouble? What is this, a new switch on the share the wealth plan? Oh, please let me explain. From what I've heard of you, Blackie, you're the only man living who can help me. But I had no idea of where or how I could reach you. Oh, so you made up the story of my stealing your grandfather's money, huh? Y yes, I did. I knew the police could trace your movements where I couldn't. And I knew you could get away from Inspector Faraday once I'd seen you. <laughs> well, thanks for the confidence. <sighs> The very worst, I could have said I was mistaken in the identification, and then they would have had to let you go. Only by then, it would be too late. Say, so look, uh, let's get organized. Uh, too late for what? To recover the diamond that was stolen from me. Uh-uh, you, you've got the wrong boy, lady. If a diamond was stolen from you, let the police get it back. They're in that business. But that diamond, Blackie, the rest of my life depends on it. I, I must have it back by tomorrow night. Oh, please, please help me. Well, with these handcuffs on and two New York detectives guarding me, I couldn't be of very much help to anybody. But those handcuffs, haven't I heard that you can get out of them whenever you want to? Yes, but I've got to want to first. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm more than sorry. I'm miserable. I knew I had to reach you, and I, I just messed up everything. No, I'll never... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Miss Moray. We'll figure some way out. Here. <laughs> Uh, wipe your eyes with this handkerchief. Thanks. Put your hand. You've got all the handcuffs. Okay, now. There, your eyes are nice and dry. Now blow. <laughs> you feel better now? Yes. Yes, I do. All right, then. Let me have your bad time story. <laughs> I don't know how I can laugh. Oh, it's easy. You, you just open your mouth and close your eyes and think of Inspector Faraday. <laughs> Never fails. Come on, Miss Moray. Tell me the whole story before Faraday gets restless. Well, I'm engaged to George Atwater. Yes? We're to be married soon, and yesterday he brought me something to look at. The Jonathan Diamond. The Jonathan, huh? Oh, that's worth a fortune. Well, George's father has millions. Here, yeah, Miss Murray, you all right over there? Oh, oh, yes, officer, thank you. I, I won't be a minute now. Blackie, the diamond belonged to George's father. George brought it over to show me, and then he had a little too much to drink, and I thought it safer if he left it with me. He agreed. And sometime during the night, it must have been stolen from my apartment. I get it. If you don't produce the diamond, there'll be a mess. Uh, the police don't know anything about the diamond? No. That's why I made up the story about my grandfather and the stolen money. Well, when do you have to produce the Jonathan, Miss Moray? Tomorrow night. George gets back from a trip then. He'll want it and... Oh, Blackie. Tomorrow night? Well, it doesn't give me much time to work, but I'll try. 
Uh, call the detective over here. All right, but why? Shh, don't ask questions. Just get him over. All right. Officer! Officer, would you come over here a minute, please? Sure, Miss Snatcher. Well, did he tell you anything? No, but I've got something to tell you, Monaghan. Indeed, and what's that? This. You shouldn't have done that, Blackie. You shouldn't have hit the officer. <laughs> you sure would have disappointed me if you hadn't said that. Now, listen. I'm going out the window and down the fire escape. As soon as I get moving, you scream for Faraday. Tell him what happened, that I socked Monaghan and put the handcuffs on you. <laughs> Here, I'd better do that now. Faraday's got the key. He'll open them later. There. Uh, now, remember, you finally worked this handkerchief from around your mouth and screamed. Have you got that? Yes. Oh, Blackie, please remember that getting back that diamond means my marriage and my whole life's happiness. Okay. Well, I'm going to New York and I'll do my best. If I get back the diamond, you get married. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be surprised if instead of Boston Blackie, from now on I'm known as Chicago Cupid. <laughs> Shorty, listen, when a piece of ice like the Jonathan Diamond is lifted, somebody's got to know something about it. Look, Blackie, I've been out all night on it. Nobody knows nothing. All I could pick up was that a fellow named Atwater owns it. None of the boys would touch it. That is, except Duke Walton. I'm telling you, this is Hollis a pistol, but Duke's been bragging that he'll grab it one of these days. Yeah? Well, where can I find him? Well, I, I checked that, too. He's out of town. That's definite. Yeah, he's been gone a week. Now, look, boss, why don't you lay off? Shorty, I promised to get that diamond back. I chartered a plane out of Chicago last night after breaking out of that hotel room. Young Atwater isn't due back in town till tonight, so I still have a little time. I'm going to waste some of it on a visit to the Atwater house. Ain't you a little out of your class up there, Blackie? <laughs> you know they got an awful lot of dough, those Atwaters. <laughs> you know something, Shorty? After the way that Moray girl smiled at me in Chicago, <laughs> I kind of feel like a million dollars myself. <laughs> Yes, sir. I'd like to see Mr. Atwater. Who shall I say is calling, please? Uh, Mr. Jones, Mr. John J. Jones. Uh, Mr. Atwater doesn't know me, but you can say it's about his son. About Mr. George Atwater, Jr.? That's right. Uh, he's in, sir. Would you like to see him? George is in? Well, I certainly would like to see him. When did he get back? A little while ago, sir. He returned earlier than we expected. Uh, come this way. He's in the library right here. Shall I announce you? No, no, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll go right in. Very good, sir. Hello there. Uh, Mr. Atwater? Yes, I'm George Atwater. Who are you? Well, my name is Jones, Mr. Atwater. John J. Jones. I'm a friend of your fiancé's. Oh, a friend of Lee? That's right. And if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a question. Sure, go ahead. Well, the night before last, when you left, Miss Moray, you were a little, uh... <laughs> oh, what do you mean, a little? I was uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't mean to be personal, but did you stop off anywhere on your way home? No, I got a cab and came right home. Uh, Mr. Atwater, where do you usually keep the Jonathan Diamond? I don't know what you're driving at, Mr. Jones, uh, but, well, we keep it here in the library, in this wall safe. Only it's not here now. Would you open the safe for me, please? Well, now, Mr. Jones, you're a perfect stranger to me, even though you are a friend of Miss Moray's. Well, you could hardly expect... Oh. So, so... This is a holdup. I'm sorry I had to pull this gun on you, Mr. Atwater, but I want to see that safe. You don't mind if I lock the library door, do you? I do mind, but I don't suppose that matters. <laughs> Not a bit. There we are. So the Jonathan was kept in the safe, huh? Combination, Mr. Atwater, and keep your hands where I can see them. Sorry, Mr. Jones. I seem to have forgotten the combination. Well, I haven't time to make you remember it. Oh, the safe doesn't look too tough. Come over here where I can watch you while I go to work on it. All right. There's nothing inside the safe, but go ahead and open Quiet. it. Quiet. Take that watch off your wrist and put it in your pocket. It's making too much noise. I can't hear the tumblers drop. Come on, come on, take it off. All right. I think it. I've got the first number. Now for the second one. <laughs> this box of yours is pretty simple, Mr. Atwater. In fact, it's about the most unsafe safe I ever saw. Mm. There, that's the second number, all right? Do you want to be a good boy and tell me the last number? No? Okay, be a bad boy and watch me find it out for myself. There. Now that ought to do it. I'll try the handle now. Well, made it. My compliments. Save them. Let's take a look in this jewelry box. Oh, so the Jonathan Diamond wasn't in the safe, huh? Well, what's this, then? 
That, uh, that's the Jonathan, all right. Oh. I, I meant to leave it at Miss Moray's apartment, but, uh, but I changed my mind. Open this door! Open it up! Open the door, Mr. Atwater! We're the police! Open up! Faraday, he must have had Shorty watched and trailed me here. You don't mind if I close this safe door, do you, Mr. Jones? I want you to be caught with that diamond still in your hand. Well, this seems to be my day for unexpected visitors. Now keep away from that door, Atwater. You don't scare me. I'm going to open it. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm going. You'll have to hurry. He's going through the window. Quick. He's got the Jonathan Diamond. He must still be in the garden. I've got two men out there. Maybe I can spot him from here. Come on, Monahan. Blackie! Blackie, stop! <laughs> We've got him. And he's got the Jonathan Diamond. Uh, at last, Boston Blackie caught red hand. Well, it does look as though Blackie is in for it now. But I have a hunch there's still plenty of action coming up. And uh, shifting from Blackie to Whitey, that is Rinso White... I'd like to tell you about a completely different kind of action, the kind you get with Rinso Suds in your washer. Yes, those Rinso Suds are so peppy and lively, they get your clothes sparkling white and bright with as little as a five-minute run per load. And when I say sparkling white, of course I really mean... <whistles> exactly, Rinso White. And there's no better way than that whistle to describe the special kind of white Rinso gets your clothes. That's because Rinso gets out more dirt. Simple, isn't it? No wonder Rinso is the only soap recommended by the makers of 33 leading washers. And, of course, a short run is not only easy on your washer, it's easy on your clothes. Keeps them new looking longer. So next wash day, do yourself a big favor. Whistle up a Rinso white, Rinso bright wash. And now, back to the adventures of Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris. <laughs> How do you like our cells, Blackie? <laughs> Air conditioning between the bars and everything. Comfortable enough for you? Oh, sure. This one's wonderful. I wish you'd try sleeping on that mattress they have in here. <laughs> I gave up in the middle of the night and slept on the stone floor. It was softer. Oh, come on, Faraday. How about a couple of pillows? Oh, huh? poor Blackie. Too bad I didn't hear you. I've suddenly gotten very deaf. Isn't that terrible? You've suddenly gotten very deaf, and you've always been very dumb. Oh, very funny, Blackie. Yes, I know. New gag writer. Last one have to go back to kindergarten? Yes, and he told me how much all the other children miss you since you stopped going, Faraday. <clears throat> Blackie, we had to grab you on that Moray girl's charge. All right, so you grabbed me. A $10,000 stick-up, Blackie. That isn't important now. We'll talk about that later. But where's the Jonathan Diamond? Jonathan Diamond? What's that? Listen, Blackie, you've had that diamond in your hand. Now you had it when we broke in. Atwater saw it there. Where is it now? Now, you listen, Faraday. You've got to get me out of here in a couple of hours. You haven't a thing to hold me on. Oh, breaking into the Atwater house. I broke out of the house, not into it. Oh. Now, see if that's a crime, Inspector. You opened the safe in the library and you stole the Jonathan Diamond. How about that? You sure I did? Mm. Does that safe look forced? Did you find the diamond on me? Uh, no, 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 no to all those things. But we've got George Atwater as a witness. A witness to what? I was calling on him at the suggestion of a mutual friend, Inspector. Hmm. We were having a chat when somebody started to pound on the door. I got scared and jumped through the window. You know, things like that happen, Inspector. People get scared and they jump. And... Blackie, I'm telling you this man to man, we've got a case against you. Atwater's word against yours that you robbed his safe. And slugging Monaghan in Chicago. The Moray girl's testimony that you robbed a grandfather. That'll add up to ten years at least. Go ahead, Inspector. Oh, all right, I'll be honest, Blackie. Young Atwater screaming about his diamond. Says you had it one minute, and we grabbed you the next minute, so it can't be missing. Only it, it is. All right, you tell us where you hid it, and I'll get him to drop all charges. I'll even talk to the Moray girl to get her to go easy if you return her dough. Now, how's that? I don't know. Oh, you must have it stashed somewhere. Give me your word of honor to deliver it back to me today, and I'll let you out. Your word's always been good with me, Blackie. Oh, come on. Don't you want to get out of jail? Well, I don't know now, Faraday. It's kind oh. of a nice jail. You know, air conditioning between the bars. Blackie, and... Blackie, be a good guy. Okay, Faraday, as a favor to you, I'll come out. And you'll have your diamond back two hours after I leave here. But I'm not to be bothered during that time by the cops. You understand? Bothered? You'll be protected. And thanks a million, Blackie. <laughs> That's all right, Faraday. I'll get plenty of satisfaction every time I remember you begging me to get out of jail. <laughs> Miss Moray, this is Blackie. Can you talk? Oh, yes, of course. Nobody's here. Did you... Did I get the diamond? Well, yes and no, Miss Moray. Nobody ever stole it from your apartment. What? 
Atwater says he took it with him when he left you the other night. But that's impossible. He didn't. I know he didn't. I even looked at it after he left. Mm, well, Miss Moray, will you meet me by the shrubbery alongside the library window of the Atwater house in exactly a half an hour? Well, all right, but what are we going to do? We're going to rob a safe, Miss Moray, with police protection. <laughs> That flashlight steady, Miss Morey, please. Mm -hmm. If we're lucky, the safe won't be locked. Why not? Because nobody knows I put the diamond back in it when the police pounded on the door. And it was only slammed shut by young Atwater. Well, here it is. There, you see? It was open. And here's the box that holds the Jonathan diamond. Uh, put your flashlight on it. We'll take a quick look. All right. There. The box is empty. Uh-oh. Atwater must have seen me put it back and grabbed it. But why is he telling the police that I have it? And see that I'm not disturbed. Uh, quick, that's Atwater now. Put out that flash and get back of these babes. Hurry. All right. Seven. Six. Nine. What are you doing, Black? I'm counting the clicks in the dial. Seven. Three. Four. Two. Got it. Hello. This is George Atwater. I got your message, but why did you call me here after I... Well, I don't care about that. We made a deal. I don't owe you a dime anymore, and you got what you wanted. Well, you have to expect it to be hot for a while. And look, remember this. I'm washed up with you and that crooked roulette wheel of yours. We're all square. And if you call me here again, I'll turn you over to the police. Yes, yes. If I hear of anybody who wants to buy it, I'll let you know. You'll what? Don't be foolish. Who'd believe that? Goodbye. I think I understand everything now, Miss Moray, but I've got to find the man Atwater just called. How can you? He didn't mention any names. No, but I counted the clicks as he was dialing that number. If my ears haven't let me down, I can call that number, too. Anyhow, I'm going to try. You think that man has a Jonathan Diamond? Yes, I think so. But you don't have to worry about it from now on. You won't be blamed because it was missing from your apartment. But you're in a mess now, aren't you? Well, yes, kind of. You see, I promised Faraday that he'd have his diamond back in two hours, and I can't keep that promise. Well, I hope the OPA hasn't put a ceiling on tempers, because if they have, he'll hit it. Hello? Police headquarters. Inspector Faraday, please. Just a minute. Faraday speaking. This is Blackie, Faraday. Your time's up, Blackie. Have you got the Jonathan Diamond? Well, no, Inspector, I haven't. You're stalling. Now, Blackie, you've crossed me for the last time. I'm going to have a dragnet out that'll have you down here before you know it, and you're going to stay in jail this time. Yeah, but, Inspector, listen, I... He wouldn't listen, Shorty. I've got to work extra fast now. Gee, Blackie, look, if there's anything Hold I it, can... Hold Shorty. Do... I'm going to try that number Atwater called. Hello, um, Atwater told me to call you. Yeah? Who's this? I've got cash I'd like to trade in for something you've got. Atwater says that... Atwater the... says, huh? Okay. I'm in an old house, 632 West 100th Street. First door on the right as you come in. Get here fast and we'll talk business. Okay, bye. Worked, eh, Blackie? I don't know. It was a little too easy. Come on, Shorty, we're going up there to get Faraday as diamond. Unless his dragnet gets me first. Blackie, duck down. Duck down this hallway. Okay, what is it, Shorty? Prowl car, just oh. coming this way. I never saw so many cops as we pass on the way up here. Never mind, Shorty. Stay flattened out against this door until it's time for what I told you to do. Yeah, okay, Blackie. But uh, who really stole the Jonathan Diamond? Nobody stole it, Shorty. Atwater left the stone at Lee Moray's apartment and then returned later that night and lifted it so that Miss Moray could report it stolen to the police. Ixnay, Ixnay, boss. Coppers. Okay, now... Uh, look, boss, why did Atwater want the day to report it? So he wouldn't be involved. This guy I called up, the one who lives in this building, has something on Atwater and wanted the diamond as his price for clamming up. Atwater had to get it for him, see? Oh, yeah, I get it. He stashed it in his own safe until he could reach this guy and turn it over to him. Only you opened the safe before he could do it. And he had to figure out a new story, huh, boss? Sure. All he had to tell the cops then is that he was afraid that Jonathan wouldn't be safe at the girl's apartment and that he went back in to get it. Oh. <laughs> 
I thought it was pretty cute when I put the diamond back in the safe. But Atwater must have seen me. Well, wish me luck, Shorty. And don't forget what I told you to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, boss. Uh, quick. Come on, it's okay now. So long. Yeah, who is it? I called you a little while ago. Okay. Open up. Okay. Well, Duke Walton. <laughs> Put that gun down, Duke. You and I can make a deal. Think so? Sure. Lucky you're not as cute as you thought. I called that water back and found your call was a phony. Too bad for you. Now I gotta bump you. Wait a minute, Duke. I'm gonna wait a couple of minutes, Blackie. Some friends of mine are coming over with a car to take you on a little trip. <laughs> now sit down in that chair and put your arms behind your back. Go on, I ain't the patient type. Okay, Duke. How's that? Yeah, that's better. Now I'm gonna tie you up nice and pretty like that. How do you like it? Too tight for your pretty hands to be tied. Well, yes, if you really want to know. I don't. I'll give it an extra yank just to make sure. Hey, Duke. Huh? Duke, look under the door. Uh, That's smoke. Where? Hey, that's right. Well, that makes things easier. This joint's a fire trap. I'll scram out of here and leave you tied up, Blackie. <laughs> Blackie, I guess I was just born under a lucky star. Eh? Maybe. But don't forget, Duke, sometimes stars have a habit of falling. Yeah, okay, so I'm ducking right out of here. Fire! Fire! The whole building's on fire! Come on, get out of here! That does it. So long, Blackie. Me and the Jonathan Diamond are getting out of here, and both of us are nice and safe, which is more than I can say for you, pal. Uh, wait a minute, Duke. I've got a proposition. Sure, but I got a date. No use trying to bust him ropes, boy. Maybe the fire will bring him through for you, huh? <laughs> hey, you did it. How'd you get out of them ropes? Them mine ain't gonna do you any good. Oh, yes, it is, Duke. This place is on fire. Go on, try and get out. I don't have to try. I'm getting. Take a look at the door, Duke. It's locked. Sure, it's locked, and I'm gonna open it right now. Hey, where'd the key go to? I've got a duke right here. I locked the door and removed the key when I had my back huh? to the door after you got the drop on me. Come on, give it to me, give it to me. We'll both be burned to death. Sure, Duke, here it is. Catch. Hey, hey, don't, don't throw it like... Hey, where'd it go? I gotta get it. Sure, you're gonna get it, but good. Ha <laughs> <laughs> you missed me, sucker. I'll, I'll sucker you. I'll get you for this bloody if it's a... Take a million... Oh, oh, hey, hey, you're breaking my wrist. Drop that gun. Okay. Now, where's the diamond? Never mind the diamond, Blackie. The fire will both be trapped. Well, there's no fire, sucker. Huh? My pal Shorty burned some papers in the hall and pounded on the door. But you... Now, give her that diamond. You must have it on you. When you thought there was a fire, you'd have never left without it. I ain't got it, Blackie. When I found your phone call was a phony, I'd give it to a guy to hold for You're lying, Duke. I'm going to search you. Now, turn around with your back to me and keep your hands in the air. Yeah, okay, but I tell you, I ain't got it on me. Well, we'll see. It's not here. Not here. It's not here. It's me, boss. Everything all right? Okay, Shorty, I'll let you in. Wait till I pick up the key. Now, don't move, you. Well, it worked, huh, boss? Yeah, it worked, but... Do you recognize this guy, Shorty? Sure, sure. That's Duke Walton, the guy I was telling you about. Who was bragged he'd have the Jonathan Diamond. Well, he hasn't got it. I've searched him. He's clean, Shorty. Ah, uh, he's holding out the dirty heel. Yes, the dirty... Heel. Heel, huh? <laughs> you know, Shorty, I think I've got something there. It's the one place I didn't look. Take off your shoes, Duke. Come on, take them off. Yeah. Yeah, you win, Blackie. The ice is in my right shoe. There's a slide in the heel. The diamond's inside. Now, that's being very sensible, Duke. Yeah. I'll just take the diamond out of that slot it's in and at the same time pull myself and Inspector Faraday out of a great big hole. It's, it's bargain day, Faraday. You've got your diamond, and I've got Miss Moray. Right, honey? Well, for a while, Blackie. Then I've got to go back home to Wisconsin. Oh, well, can we go now, Inspector? Okay, Blackie. Go ahead, beat it. You're in the clear. Only remember this. You make one slip, Blackie, and as sure as my name is Faraday, I'll be on your neck. You'll be on my neck, mm. huh? Okay, Inspector, but before Miss Moray leaves for Wisconsin, I, I hope I'll have her there for a little while first. <laughs> Oh, say, uh, one more thing about Rinso. That same Rinso that's such a big help on wash day. I'd just like to add that it's also a mighty big help three times every day at dishwashing time. Even your greasiest roaster is a cinch to wash in those rich Rinso suds. And, of course, Rinso's grand for all the soap and water jobs around the house. Walls, floors, woodwork, windows, tiles. They all come sparkling bright and clean with Rinso on the job. 
So get Rinso tomorrow for dishwashing, for housework, and for a wash that's... And now a glimpse at next week's adventure of Boston Blackie. I won't do it, I tell you. I, I can't do it. But Mr. Manletter, it's the only way your business can be saved. I don't care about that. The only way it can be saved is by risking the life of my friend Boston Blackie. Well, I'd rather it were lost. I won't ask Blackie to keep that appointment. I don't even want to know about it. All right, Mr. Manletter, if that's the way you want it. I'm going out and try to raise the money. You'll hear from me later, and remember, I don't want Blackie to hear about this. Hello, Mary. Get me Boston Blackie. <laughs> Be sure to listen at this same time next week for another exciting adventure with Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris with Richard Lane as Inspector Faraday. You can see Chester Morris as Boston Blackie on the screen at your favorite movie theater. Boston Blackie's latest Columbia picture is One Mysterious Night, soon to be released. Original music for this program by Charles Cornell. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Rinso and wishing you all a very pleasant good night. And don't forget, tomorrow, when you ask your grocer for the new Rinso, buy a cake of Life Boy at the same time. Life Boy's rich, purifying lather goes right after dirt and perspiration, leaves you feeling extra clean. So use Life Boy daily in your bath or shower. Remember, it's the only soap specially made to stop... B.O. This is the National Broadcasting Company. And that's Boston Blackie starring Chester Morris in The Jonathan Diamond from June 23, 1944, as heard on NBC and sponsored by Rinso. Next time on the Film Detective Podcast, it's a radio detective adventure of Philip Marlowe starring Gerald Moore, so don't miss it. To learn more about this series, visit thefilmdetective.com. See you next time.